Well, my sweetheart here and I celebrated 40 years together Sunday. Father's Day yesterday, down at the Fife with all the kids, grand, uh, grandkids and everything. And tomorrow we leave to check off one of the biggest bucket lists we've ever done. We're going to take a seven day, six night trip from Marble uh, Lee's Ferry in Marbles Canyon down the Colorado River and travel back 1.8 billion years in time to the bottom. 187 miles, 100 rapids, and we're going to take you along for the trip. So we hope you enjoy it as much as we do. Can't wait. The, uh, we'll get a chance to stop at Phantom Ranch, the only civilization in the whole place. I don't know how long we'll be there. But then we'll be uh, helicoptered out at Whitmore Wash, River Mile 187, to uh, the T-Bar Ranch. From the T-Bar Ranch, we'll catch a fixed-wing airplane back to uh, Cliff Dweller's Lodge, where we'll leave the car for the week that we're gone. So we're really looking forward to it, and we're going to catch highlights of the trip on the way up there, the trip down the canyon, and the experience back. Hope you enjoy it. All right, it's 7.20 Wednesday morning. And ever since we put this trip on the credit card, Linda's been shopping and buying and getting everything together. But we're limited to 25 pounds each. So there's our limit, 25 pounds. Got everything else packed up, ready to go. It's 7.20 in the morning. I don't know if I said that already or not, but uh, it's about a three and a half hour, four hour drive. And uh, we'll take you along. Our trip begins in Payson, driving north on Highway 87. We go through Pine and Strawberry and continue to climb to over 7,000 feet until we top out on the rim. We follow that all the way to Lake Mary Road where we turn north and that takes us to Flagstaff, which is just about the halfway point. About an hour and 45 minutes into our drive. That was Mount Humphreys, part of the San Francisco Peaks. Don't see any snow on it now, but I'll bet when we get on the north side of it, there's probably still some up near the top. We continue north on Lake Mary Road, staying above six and 7,000 feet elevation, past Mormon Lake, Lake Mary, and Upper Lake Mary, until we get into Flagstaff where we hop on I-40, go down to Butler Avenue, get off there and then catch 89 North again. All right, we just left Flagstaff a few minutes ago, about to drop out of the forest. We just crossed about 7,275 feet elevation. And we got lots of clouds and uh, stuff in the air today. But straight ahead, out in the distance, is the Painted Desert. We'll be driving through it. And there's a forecast for a chance of thunder showers today. Continuing north out of Flagstaff on Highway 89, we begin to drop out of the Ponderosa Pine and into the high desert for the first time since we left home after 125 miles. This area is potted with volcano craters and fresh lava flows from as recent as 1065 AD. Out of the high desert down into the Painted Desert and where the Little Colorado River drains into the Grand Canyon. We're at 4,800 feet right now, and in a couple of days, we'll be playing in the Little Colorado River, where it comes into the mighty Colorado River. This is where the road splits between the North Rim and the South Rim. If you take a left here, you can go to the South Rim, check it out, go straight, get to the North Rim. To drive from one rim to the other, I think it's 236 miles. And here's the Little Colorado River. We've gone 154 miles. Right 
down into the painted desert area unfortunately this is one of the days out of the 350 days a year that there's no sunshine we got clouds and that affects the colors they don't come out as bright you don't get the shadows and we've been on Navajo Reservation for probably 60 miles now right outside of Flagstaff you hit the Navajo Res there you see some of the setups where they sell their jewelry and everything they're all along here this is the turn for Tuba City in Cayente <coughs> Jacob Lake 99 that's on top of the North Kaibab on the road that goes to the North Rim our destination is 57 miles see the hard rock on the top of that little butte there everything else is roading away out from under it just a small taste of what's to come we follow these cliffs for the next few miles about seven miles ahead the road splits the road to the right goes to Page and the Lake Powell the road to the left goes to Marble Canyon Cliff Dwellers Jacobs Lake and the North Rim of the Grand Canyon well, we are out here on the reservation quite a ways from flat quite a ways from anything and here's what you can get on the radio Sing along. Anyway, thought you'd enjoy that. We looked at the uh, mileage we've gone so far since we left home. It's at 7 30 this morning when we left, 11 30 now. And we've gone 196 miles. That's only seven miles further than what we're going to be doing on the river. We're going to get out at mile 187 on the river. So uh, that's just to try to put the trip in perspective. It's, it's still hard to imagine. But we're going to find out what it's like. All right, we're approaching the intersection. The cliffs off to the left or the uh, Vermilion Cliffs, they're on the other side of the Colorado River. So we're, we're getting close. bridge next time we see this will be from the water looking up Ooh, it's way down there
tunes. Of course, it's not fully outfitted yet. No, no parking. parking, no parking, no parking. Well, we did find out what room we have, room number 31. We're going to drive down to Lee's Ferry where we'll be launching from tomorrow just to check it out. On the way up here, we heard on the radio that there was a guy from Florida who went backpacking in the Grand Canyon last Sunday. He never showed up. They haven't found him yet. It's a pretty good chance he's probably dead. I read a book several years ago, Death Over the Edge, that documented all the deaths in the Grand Canyon. And at that time, it was like 370 or something. But it's nothing to take lightly. A lot of people think it's because it's a national park. It's like Disneyland. You can go there and wander around and check it out and everything's fine. But it's not. It's serious business. Now this is a road down to Lee's Ferry. And of course Lee's Ferry was the only crossing on the Colorado River for hundreds of miles. And uh, a guy named Lee was the first guy to establish it. And uh, he was involved in a, uh, massacre. a massacre of women and children, Hundreds. settlers that were heading to California, and was convicted and killed. Firing squad. And uh, somebody else ran the ferry for a while, and the then a uh, Model A tipped over, three people drowned, and then they built, built a Navajo bridge after that to get across. But this is the only place you can cross the river downstream until you get to Boulder Dam on Lake Mead. This is the only road that goes down to the Colorado River for the next 279.5 miles where they will be taken out to boats at Pierce Ferry. The cost of our seven days, six nights on the Colorado River included a room at Cliff Dwellers Lodge the night before and a helicopter flight out of the Grand Canyon to the Bar T Ranch where we would board a fixed wing plane for our flight back to Marble Canyon. One thirty-six the day before. We're about probably a mile downstream from Lee's Ferry where we, where we will be launching tomorrow. And this is the first rapid we're going to encounter. And it's not really much of a rapid compared to the ones we're going to be seeing. Let me just show you what this sucker's moving like. It's cranking right along there. We walked through the sand on that beach a while ago. <laughs> Their feet got full of sand. This is a view right outside our room. We had a dust storm blowing in, lots of wind, threat of rain, and we weren't sure what our week was going to be like. We had picked this week in June because typically that's before the monsoons come in and when it's the hottest and when they release the most water out of the reservoir. Here's what's right behind us. Oh, 
boulder right there.